Hi, this is Frederick from RawVegan.com and I'm here in Paris. This is La Seine, the famous river La Seine in the heart of Paris. And today I've got a very interesting video for you and it was a very interesting day for me because I got to meet uh, a mentor of mine. His name is Albert Mosseri. He's a French Egyptian born natural hygienist who uh, has been writing over 25 books on the topic of natural hygiene, fasting, health, natural diet. And I've been reading his books for many, many years. Uh, in fact, I started reading his stuff uh, 15 years ago, and that's how I got into this whole raw food health thing, is for his work. And then I studied it more, and I learned more about natural hygiene. And I've never met the man, and he's now past 85. So I figured, if I'm gonna meet him, this is the time. And so we drove two hours out of Paris into, um, into the French countryside to meet Albert Mosseri. And he was there at home and we uh, met him. He showed us his fruit trees and we had a little chat. Now, he's Egyptian. He speaks Arabic and he speaks French because he's from French uh, culture, heritage. And uh, so, but we asked him, could, could, could he do some interview in English? So he said, yes. He said, well, my English is not perfect. He doesn't speak very loudly, so we'll have to jack up the volume and I'll explain the little things. But. Uh, He's a very interesting man and um, you know, it, it was sort of a, a, a very important step in my life for me to meet him finally. So I'm excited to share this with you and then we'll talk more about his philosophy right after. I was born vegetarian. That, I mean, that means I didn't like to eat meat. I didn't like meat. I, and I never ate meat, neither meat. I ate some fish, very, very little, but meat never. Mm -hmm. And my health wasn't very good. So I found some books speaking of natural hygiene written by, by English authors. And I was in Egypt. I was in Egypt, yes. In Egypt, in... Uh... I was born 85 years ago. In Egypt. <laughs> In Egypt, of course. Mm -hmm. Then I followed these natural hygiene, English authors, and I found at last Thompson in Scotland. Yes. And Shelton in Texas, USA. And I thought they were the best authors that I ever come across. Shelton and Thompson, how were they different from other people, from other authors? Well, they studied the subject much more thoroughly than any other author. All other authors were super superficial in thinking and in practice, and uh, they are not natural hygiene, they just uh, advise remedies. Although they say they must, although they say one must go to the cause of disease, they soon advise remedies, which is the contrary of what they have said. Mm. And uh, so you started natural hygiene and you, you moved to France? Well, I moved. To, when I came to France, I was 35 years ago. I was practically ousted from Egypt mm. because of politics. And I came to France and I began writing and practicing and supervising fasts. And were you the only one in France practicing natural hygiene and fasting? I am. I was I was the only one and I am still the only one. Of course now there are a few other people who say they are natural hygienists but they are not. What is natural hygiene for people who don't know? And what is the main difference between natural hygiene and naturopathy? 
natural hygiene, these are two different questions. Natural hygiene is a mode of life. It's not a treatment. It's not a remedy. It's just a mode of life. As for the second question, the difference between natural hygiene and naturopathy <coughs> is that naturopathy would advise a lot of remedies, like electrical remedies, like plant herbs, yes, which are not uh, good for health. And you also made some interesting discoveries in fasting, where you talked about fasting, <coughs> water fasting, yes, and also the half fast yes, after yes and can you explain what is the method you discovered that is that is different from Shelton I Shelton would fast people up to 50 or 80 days I used to follow him and fast people the mo the, the longest fast I have ever supervised is 87 days fasting a man who just died a few years ago at the age of 103, I used to, I had uh, uh, a couple of fasters who, who were on the 20th day of the fast and they called me and to, they were in my place. They told me will you look, Mr. Mosseri, at our tongue, it's black. I thought about this matter and I repeated the experience. I saw tongues becoming black, becoming some other color. Then I thought it was elimination and I have advised since then that the fast should not exceed 20 days. And after those 20 days? After those 20 days, I advised a, a half a fast, semi-fast. This semi-fast should be pursued until the thirst, thirst would disappear. And the tongue clears. And the tongue clears, in theory. Yes. Because they never go so far away. But uh, people who fast more than 20 days, you, s you wrote in your books that after 20 days, it's a waste of time to it's fast? It's a waste of time, Okay. yes. Because they would be better to Shelton do the half say, fast. Yeah. When they ask Shelton what about the uh, long fast, he says, and they, uh, they, ask, they tell him they are still eliminating, but Shelton says it's better than nothing. Because it's slow elimination. It's very slow and it almost stopped. So it's better to do half fast? Exactly. Because the elimination continues, the exactly. detox continues. Exactly. Okay. What is the half fast? What is the half well, fast? Well, the half fast consists in eating every two hours 100 grams of apples. So a very small quantity. A very small quantity every two hours okay. until the body does not lose any more weight. When, when the weight is stable, that means elimination is almost at end. So I, you break the, the I, half quit the, I quit the half fast and I give them uh, normal hygienic diets. How many fast have you supervised over the years? 3,000 or 4,000.